The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 16th of July. This is the early edition. It's 8.06 in the morning instead of 10.06, my usual time, uh, pre-recording this. And we're looking at the Dow futures up uh, 46 points at 40,560. So I'll show you the futures here. Uh, MACD, everything's strong. The, nine, the price is way over the 9. The 9-period nine, nine moving average is way over the 14. MACD is good. Stochastic is 86%. That's really nice. On balance volume is overbought. It's the only uh, technical tool that I use as, a, as an overbought or an oversold instrument. Sometimes the relative strength can do that, but it's a little more complicated. But the relative strength, yeah, the little gray line on the daily chart on the left, still very good. And we've got the, uh, what did I just say, the stochastics at 86%, very nice. And the, and the weekly chart, oh, I need to take that out. I forgot to change that. I had moved it a little bit. Should have been like that. Little mini uh, cup formation, arch formation that became a cup formation. Now we're retesting the previous high. That was the high that was right here. That was in April, the week of the, the 5th of April. And that is in the YM at 40,762. And right now we're at 40,561, getting close. Okay, so with that said, a number of things I need to do. Just do this right now since uh, this is going to be pre-market. So the futures are probably telling us a little bit more because they're trading uh, – before the 9.30 open. But here is the close on Monday. We went above the 40,000, almost the almost perfect round number close on Friday. That was at 40,000. Now we're, at, we're closing at price at 40,285. And at this particular point, I just take, have to take a moment and I'll be doing a, a, a workshop, a live a webinar Coming up next week, uh, it'll all be on the front page of TFNN today or tomorrow. Most importantly, what I'm looking at is this rectangle formation. Yes, the price went from it went quickly down, almost in a single leg. It wasn't almost; it was in a single leg A to the downside, and then it started to make higher highs and higher lows. And the rule of thumb in the rectangle formation is that it should, it could very well go to the previous high, just under, right on, or just above. And then you've got to be careful if there's a pullback of more than 50% of the entire rectangle, high and low. Well, at this point, we've gone above that. And that's really important. It makes that 40,077 a key number to monitor. How high we go above it is going to be really important to say we're either leaving this rectangle alone for now. You can see the same thing in the weekly chart. Or it's going to come back and have a trading pattern that just stalls for a while in that range. And the same thing with the SPY. Let's just go to the closing price of the S&P yesterday. It goes very nicely. It had an all-time high. Whoops, I needed to update that. I'll do it right now. That high was, in fact, right at the inside track repellent zone right there. See how the price keeps getting pulled back? It's like a reverse magnet. It becomes a magnet and then it reverses, you know, 5666.95. Let me just change that. You know how a magnet, when you reverse it, it becomes a repellent. So we'll see what happens here. Leg F, uh, leg E in the weekly chart, right up against a long term trend line resistance. And the monthly chart has gone right to the inside track repellent zone. The higher it goes away from this, the greater the chances are that you really raise the base for support. It's in leg E in the monthly chart. And we'll be looking at that. I'll just do this real quickly. There's the E mini. Uh, whoops, I typed it in the wrong place. Yes, there. This is a continuous contract. I do have it as a, as a leg F right now. I think I, I I don't need to change it. All the technicals are good except this blue line, the on-balance volume of the daily is rather overbought. A little bit overbought in the weekly chart, but it's only in leg C, and that's really positive. We did a one. Three times we've done a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. We've gone just above it. You can see that gray extension line. And here we are in leg D 
in the monthly chart. Remember, the objective in the Chapman wave is always to get you from a buy signal to a buy, or at least to see a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode. And that should take you to at least four higher peaks, A, B, C, D is the fourth. Okay, let's go to the NQ. NQ right now is trading up 44 points. Uh, yes, 44 points at 20,627. It stalled at that peak G. And that's just telling me that there's a chance that we've got the stalling formation in the, in the let me show you the QQQ itself. That was a closing price yesterday. Stalling from the 503.52 high that was made four sessions ago. Uh, five, actually, it'll be five sessions today. And we'll see what happens because it just be, could, it could be a breather. That's all. But in the meantime, let's go back to the NQ. The NQ is showing that it's trying to rally, but it is in a stalling formation. I'll just show you that SMH is the same thing. SMH is the semiconductor, uh, Van X Semiconductor ETF. Uh, 279.57 was a high back on the 20th of June, pulled back to the 255 level, then screamed up to 283.07 and now has stalled. Remember, I was talking about that rectangle formation. So we could be going into, in fact, I'll draw this in right now to show you how patterns repeat over and over. Let's see if it gets back into this range, just stays in this range. Doesn't have to break down, just needs to stay in the range. I've got it as a leg D in the weekly chart. Let's go to the IWM, the closing price yesterday was 217.19, uh, huge leg D to the upside. Um, we're looking at it today, 219.09 pre-open, and we've got RTY right here. Look at that, strong leg D. Now, the question was, and I'm going to go to this. I I'll try to go to it today or I'll go to it tomorrow because it is very important. The question was, Basil, you, you have all these indicators and so often you do get a, a very, very powerful move to the upside. Instead of taking a little bit off the other day to the buy that you had on the uh, Russell 2000, why didn't you just add to it? And the answer is I like to do the money management regardless of the power of the move up. But I did want to have a pullback, I take a little bit off and then put even more back on. Uh, but we didn't get a chance. There's still a chance. It's a really strong look at the aperture. Look at the the wide space between the nine period differential, it's called the green line in the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, and the slower moving uh, 26 period exponential moving average. Look at that. That is so wide that to get that green to go back to uh, pay, uh, to go underneath the uh, slow moving average, whew, you'd have to get it moved down to 21, 20, 20 around about 2130. Uh, on the IWM. I don't see that right now. And I also see it as a breakout. As a, I'm, pro I'm thinking this is a brand new leg B in the weekly chart and as a leg C in the monthly chart. This is going to be the laggard. I've been talking about how laggards in this particular phase should start to become leaders. L becomes L. That's the laggard becomes leader. And we're going to see, maybe we'll see the same thing here in the XLF. Uh, look at that huge leg D. That's the financial all-time high as we, as we speak. It's trading at 43.10. Uh, here we go. There's your leg D. This is is this a leg E or is this a brand new leg C? That becomes A, that becomes D slash B, and that becomes C in the weekly chart. That wasn't the point I wanted to make. The point was the laggard, which is the KRE, is just starting to find its legs. The regional banks, I've been wanting the regional banks to show some strength for quite a while, and then to show some show. I don't think they can do that. All I'm saying is that they've begun the move. I'll be back in a moment with Basil Chapman, early edition of the Tiger Technician's Hour, and check out my opening call. See you in a minute. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, early editions will be replayed at uh, 10 o'clock this morning for my usual time. This is the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at the KRE moving very nice into leg deep with this 200 period moving average right here. One of the reasons why... We didn't want we did go into it a long time ago. I haven't gone into it yet. I do want to see how it tests this weekly 200 period moving average of 52.81. I think it's going to hang around you a little bit. We'll see if that happens. And you've got earnings coming out. Let's just see. I think Bank of America in the next couple of days. Uh, Bank of America, which we are long, has had a really strong move. Talking, I just wanted to show you this because we were talking about the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, and it's right there in leg D in the uh, weekly chart, trading right now at 42.72 pre-market. It's up 83 cents, uh, but it's just getting into an area of resistance. Uh, we've been long for quite some time. I could write over there. Uh, that's the weekly chart. So it goes back to 2023. I'd like a pullback, and then I'd like to see if we can add to it. We're actually doing some adding to some of our positions um, right here that we've been long quite some time, and they've all held very nicely. I want to look at some fresh positions. I didn't do that. So now let's go to um, – now, I want to get, do this quite quickly. So I did that, did that, did that. So I spoke about the SMHs. I said semiconductors stalling, not breaking down, but stalling right here at 275.00, up $1.17 pre-market. 283.07 is the all-time high. Needs to get above. If it goes above that, especially if it gets to the 284 level in this, this week, that's going to be really positive. I think it's going to probably stall a little bit here. It's had a fantastic move. Okay, next question I had was... Uh, did that, did that, did that. Yeah, could I do the gold? Yep, the gold right now. Gold is up a little. It's up seven, not a little, a lot. Up 17 at 24.46. I've loved this pattern. Uh, the gold has this cup formation. It's trying to retest for the third time. Um, the highs that were made around about 24. Let me just give you the exact number right here. There it is. So what I said was this, whoops, it moved right there and right there. And that makes this particular level right at this particular point. So by the, by about the, what is it day today? Today is the uh, 16th. So by next week, there's a, sh a chance we could do it much sooner. I'm just saying there's a chance we could test the high in the continuous contract that was made on the 20th of May or 2477. 
And right here we are at 24.46. Oh, it's not very far away. But, yeah, you know, once you start to get to this level, there are a lot of resistances. But look at this. All the technicals are good in the in the daily chart. The technicals are improving. Uh, the weekly chart has held. The nine-period moving average didn't break down on that big slide. Still very strong. MACD and stochastic are really kind of weak. But the on-balance volume and the nine-period moving average over the 14 is good. And this is a peak B. In the monthly chart, I still see a C and a D coming uh, in the continuous contract. Let's look at the GDX. GDX is trading right now uh, up 48 at 38.43. Question was, why didn't we go into, for subscribers to open a call, go back into the GDX? That's because we have a, uh, um, a, gold, a silver stock, mostly silver. I think they have some gold, but mostly silver. And it's done really well. Its lower prices just allows us to get the same percentage possible, even greater percentage gain, but at the same time, uh, using that money for other other things. That's what I want you to do. We've got a list of stocks that are looking really attractive. So the um, uh, GDX has a target of 37.8, had a target of 37.87. It's gone right through that. The next target, and this is a big target. This is going to take a little while longer. That's the one of the um, April of 2022 with a high of 41.61, and here we are. It's maybe three points higher. Yeah, it's a lot to go, three points higher. Let's just look at this. Uh, we want to look at high-grade copper. Right. We want to look at high-grade copper. Where did I put it? Right there, high-grade copper, HG. There we go. High-grade copper is kind of weak. You know, I've been worrying about this because there's a big divergence between uh, what's going on in the market and what's going on in the high-grade copper, what's going on the uh, HGX, H dollar, HGX, that's the Philadelphia Housing Index. But look at this. Housing Index was really weak. Now it's come from the uh, 640s all the way to, wow, 711. Uh, All-time high was right there. That was the week of March the 29th at 742.53. And it's holding really well. Uh, what's happening with interest rates? Well, U.S., you can see, oh, strong move up. That's what we wanted to see. I spoke about this yesterday. I said, if we can see the 120 uh, and maybe 28, 30 seconds to 122 and 10, 30 seconds, that's going to be really good action. It means that yields are coming down. A lot of things are coming together. This market is really liking what's going on. And in a sense, the market's saying, uh, we feel a little bit more comfortable about um, the the uh, overall political spectrum because we just want to see some some clarity to be able to know where we can position ourselves and I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. I want you to go to the crude oil because crude oil you would think would be going up well, there it is down one at eighty point forty one you'd think it would be going higher but no it flipped to the negative side look how strong that nine period moving average has been and now it's just about to go negative but it hasn't. But it's got this chap wave inside track repellent zone. Isn't that amazing, this technique? I love it. When I discovered it decades ago, I said, gosh, it's such an easy technique. I've never seen it. I get Stocks and Commodities magazine for uh, decades and decades and decades. And I just I don't see it ever. I don't see anyone counting the peaks and troughs. And I never see anyone using the trend lines like this. It's just a simple tool, and like a, maybe an eighth of an inch or less. Yeah, and you just use it as, as a repellent zone. When it breaks above it, that's important. So we're watching this closely. If crude oil starts to trade at any point in July going into August in the 85, 80 to 86, 30 area, I think that's a nice breakout, but it hasn't done it yet. So we refrain from looking at some of those um, uh, oil services, etc. But look at this. Uh, Slumberger spoke about it yesterday. Said it, it was a very nice move. And if, if crude oil does move higher, this is one of those that should move higher, but it's down 20 cents at 47.74 today. But it is attempting a move to the upside. And that's what we're looking at. What's working, what's not. So this is stalled at the particular this particular moment. Uranium, R U R N M. U R N M. Um, Sprott Uranium Miners ETF. Now, it's so interesting because we've got a variety of um, positions. Uh, no, we have a position in the UE UEC, which has been very good. That's the U Uranium Corporation. 
but that wasn't the point I wanted to make. The point I wanted to make was that they're all doing done something different. Look, here is the this is a uranium ETF stuck at the 200 period moving average, trying to move off, and then had a reddish candle so far yesterday, and today it's trying to get back again to the upside. And look at um, S uh, oh CCJ. CCJ is the uh, Chemico Chemico Corporation Uranium Fuel, a way better pattern because it's held. Look at the weekly chart. Look how it's held. Look at U U U U. U U U U is more like the chart that we were looking at before. That's the uranium uh, spot ETF, but it's it's doing okay. This is energy fuels. Our UEC has done very nicely uh, with the last 15 weeks. It's running up to 687 market up seven cents but that's not the point it has to break out of its channel it has to break the upside so it has to get to 7.25 to say hey I'm back in the run for 20 minutes to try to get to a new high we'll see what happens I'm fine it doesn't have to like it's a tower it's a tower it's a tower it's a tower futures are up 9 I'll be back if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. So I typed into the den that the ESU five minute, the ESU 10 minute charts are still showing strong 914s. At the same time, I watch it to see if there isn't just a normal digestive moment making the 5685 200 EMA in the 10 minute chart a support to be tested if the 5688 support goes. Look what just happened. This is the 10 minute chart. 
and there was some news, economic news, and whoop, we went right down to the 56.85 level. But now look what's happening. The S&P's up 11. Now this is the day's young, and once you get this kind of whippy action where you go above the rectangle high and then below the rectangle high, it just says, be careful because you've got, uh, this, is, this is the trading band that's going to be even more important now between 56.93 and 56.88. Uh, let's see what happens because... If, in fact, the uh, I don't know, usually we have Fletch or someone gives uh, some kind of news as to what happened in the economic uh, story. Uh, if that becomes a base of support, that is really important. So uh, momentary uh, pullback. And now we've, we're watching to see what happens. But you've got the S&P. Uh, S&P is up 11 and the Dow has gone up a little bit more. It's now up 90. So how it uh, sustains through the next until we get to nine o'clock, where we get Tommy's show, uh, market kickoff. Let's just see what happens. And uh, this, the bias to the upside has been really strong. And that's most important. I had a question about Palantir Technologies. Uh, Pre-market is down 52 cents to 28.15. It's got a leg D in the daily chart. I'm calling this a leg C in the weekly because it is so strong. I'm not calling it an E yet. But I think it's uh, doing very well. All 45 was an all-time higher. 45 round number high back in January 2021. Slumped to $5.27 back in 2022. And here we are at uh, 28. This is a very good action. And, um, yeah, I think it's good. Nine over the 14. Uh, MACD is good. Relative strength is starting to weaken a little bit. But it's not bad. It's just weakening a little bit. As stochastic's flat at 80, 80, 88%. That's what you want. On balance volume says, oh, a little bit uh, overbought. Uh, maybe it needs some kind of a breather. That's all, just a breather. Okay, so let's just go through. Uh, I got to the copper, and now I want to go to the dollar. DXY, I haven't looked at the currencies for a while because the dollar's been in decided downturn. And there it is, under the 200-period under the moving average down. Uh, a tick at 104.24. It's testing. Oh, I forgot to draw that in. I, I discussed it and then I completely forgot. It's had a beautiful cup formation and now it's got, and this is, it, it went, it missed the high. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so let me just do this. This is the way I use the technique. Chap, we've met technique, arch formation. This is bar symmetry or the cup formation. So we'll go to the high that was made. Here we go, uh, high that was made, so that's green, and then we go pink. So the number of bars to the upside equal the number of bars to the downside. We haven't taken it out, and that's the low of the 4th of June, 103.99. We've gotten real close, we're at 104.24, so this is what I need to do. I need to do, I make that pink, make that an arch formation. Gosh, I thought I'd done it, I didn't, okay. So I'll just do it now. And that just says that by within the next couple of days, there should be a test of the 103 point. Of course, I just said it. Now I can't remember it. 103, 103.99. Okay. And I got an inside track. This is an inside wedge. Target repellent line. That's it. Okay, we'll see what happens. I'll just keep that drawing in. Uh, looking at the EUR, USD, that should have had a nice rally, which it has. I did do that with the, um, there's a technique. If you want to learn it, I'm going to be teaching it uh, when I do my next webinar. I'll show exactly what's been working. So this is, this is it. And it said that by the, uh, that was yesterday. By yesterday, there should have been a high that tested the 4th of June, 1.0916, and it did that. So it's one day early, and that, that's very good. It's pulling back a little bit. Let's look at the USD JPY. That's the yen. That was the euro. Now we're looking at the yen. I'm looking at the yen, and I'm just going to do that. There we go. Um, that made a peak D. Ooh, I need to clarify that. That's the D. And now I need to put a down arrow because... The nine period moving and the price. Yep, that's a down arrow. That's a sell signal. We'll see if it's a sell mode, but it's a sell signal. And we've gone above. Okay, that's that's no use anymore. Okay, it says 156 is a really important support. We've got 158.68, up 65. 
Uh, we'll see what happens. But it is a, a, in a sell signal in the daily chart. That's the yen. And we've got the weekly chart at a peak E. And we'll see what happens in the leg E in the monthly chart. Okay. Oh, I need to do... Okay. Yes. So, um, questions that came in. I want you to get... Oh, that's right. You had said there was a chance that Microsoft could do this chapter with stalk leg formation. How's, what's the prognosis now? Well, Microsoft is only up $0.08 cents at 454 The Dow is up 112 in the futures. The S&P is up 12 And yet, Microsoft, I had said Microsoft on the 5th of July had a 468.15 high. And then two day, and then a doji candle. That's called the silent doji. I, I haven't had a webinar on that for ages. And that's basically what happens is if you do a search, you won't find... Um, a doji candle, well, it's very hard to do a search uh, for a high that's made and then to identify or a low that's made, identify a doji candle. That's just like a plus sign, opens and closes at about the same price. Um, it's just hard because you would find that it's, it's kind of rare to make an actual, you don't know whether it's the high or the low. But look what happened. I call this a sign and doji because the high was made at 468.15. And then to show that, you know, I kind of ran up out of steam. I just energy. And I had this tiny little doji candle, the tiniest candle that you've seen in months. And then we had a big red candle with a round number open of 457. And that just was the clue that said to me, uh, Microsoft should now start the process of the beak formation, that's in the stalk leg formation. Let me show you if you can see this. It is a long leg, and you know how the stalk leg stands on one leg, and then there's a very oval, it has to be an oval pattern. If it's, in this case, it's an, um, it's almost like a circle, but the, the pattern that I'm talking about is, a, is an oval because it's like the body of a stalk. And then you get the neck. The neck, sometimes they crane the neck and sometimes they make the neck all bent. So the neck is over the oval. And then when it finally breaks down, it forms the beak. And that's the beak. And the beak tests the arch high. In this case, it'll be 433 or 431. That's going to be the clue. But that means that it's a weekly chart. It means that for some reason, in the next couple of weeks, Microsoft won't participate in the rally. Now, I'm talking about that because we are long. Uh, we're long from way, way down, over 100 points down. But I don't mind because I, I think it's a winner in 2024 and that I would love a, a pullback so that we can start to even expand a long position. But in the meantime, it hasn't broken it down and it's 453. And when it starts to break down above, uh, I mean, it breaks down below 446. You don't have anything. You don't get the next position. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, let me just say that the uh, 914 and the 5 minute chart and the 10 minute chart has just been green. There's absolutely nothing to do here other than to stay long at this particular point. And of course, this particular point is at 842 instead of 1042, which is my usual time. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I wanted to say look, right here, I've got the um, what is it called again? It's called the these are the big movers. So you've got MSTR, okay, MSTR, of course, that's in the micro. Here we go, big move up, gaps up. Um, it's supposed to be stuck between the 1999.99 high of March of 2024 micro strategy. Uh, had peak D in the week, in the monthly chart. It's taken months now, one, two, three. This is the fourth month. It's just been stuck in the range. It's trying to find some support. The nine period moving average is holding really nicely. So it's at 1624. The next one is ASML. This is a semiconductor uh, company. ASML is ASML Holdings. Uh, leg E in the monthly chart, leg D in the weekly chart. And I believe that this has to be called A, B. Oh, I can't tell you how many. This is really clarifying it for me that this was the high right here in so many charts and that this is a brand new move in the daily chart, so this is an ABC. Yep, ABC, it should still go to a new all-time high. Uh, it's trading at 1,074.74 up at 11. So let me just do this A, B, I've got this as C right now. All right, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Oh, and now, that service now, oh, that's good. Service now is at a big move up, 9.15 pre-market, 777.00. Uh, this is, yeah, I had it all notated, but I haven't got it now. I remember drawing in the uh, falling axe formation. That means it goes to a high, then it starts to make lower highs and l much lower lows, and then it forms a support level. I'll be talking about this in my webinar coming up. These are techniques that you need to know because they're going to be very fruitful over the next couple of months. Uh, let me just show you here uh, if I can do that. There are, oops, there. So this is a pattern that I talk about. It's called the falling X. Uh, it runs up to peak D or E or even F. Then it makes lower highs and much lower lows. And then it forms a cup formation or a V-shaped formation and takes out that upper declining trend line of the, of the falling cone formation, right? And that's very positive. So it's broke, break, breaking out. If it can move much higher, then you look to each high to see whether it can take it out. Well, it's already done that. The high of 815.32 and 858. Oh, that's 806. All right, that's 806.52. So it's getting really close. 
and that says it should make a new high. That's service now. I just want to look at Shopify. It was one of those that we wanted to buy in my newsletter. I said, we're just going to hold it for a little bit. It's been pulling back quite sharply, and now it's had a big 3.41 move up in the pre-market, taking it to 67.65. But that's exactly where the 200-period moving average is, which is resistance. But it's finally, Shopify finally starting to find some kind of buoyancy, but it it has to hold it. It's no use just finding it and then losing it. So let me just get rid of this. I'll move this across. And a question that I had was, could I look at Caterpillar? Yep, Caterpillar had a strong day yesterday, and now it's following through at 347.30. It's still early in its move to the upside. I, I want you to buy either PAVE or Caterpillar today. PAVE um, is in the... Global Infrastructure Development ETF. It's a 38.83 up 17 cents. I I just needed to see what happened today, whether or not there'd be a breather. I didn't want to overpay for anything like Caterpillar or Pave, even though I knew that there was a chance that they could start a new move to the upside. First of all, Pave is the 40 was the round number, all time high. So to be buying it here means that I really have conviction that it's going to go not to 40, but to 42 to really power through. I think it has the capability, PAVE is the infrastructure and development uh, ETF, but I, I didn't feel right now to I wanted to pay for overpay for it. I wanted just a little bit of a dip in some of the positions we have to add to them because they've done so well. So uh, that's the way I've got it at this particular point. Now, the other thing I wanted to look at here was, whoops, let me go to that. The Bitcoin, Bitcoin was down 300 before, and now it's at 550 at 64.25. The nine period moving average hasn't crossed positive, but it's really a good sign that it's had this move to the downside. Bitcoin is the, uh, at BTC, this is the futures. It's had this strong move up, Chapman wave falling axe formation, and it's holding now for the second session after the gap. We've got it still going higher. This is the third session now. Now the nine period moving average, I had someone uh, uh, mentioned to me that they actually had a buy signal on G, uh, Bitcoin. And I thought, wow, that's really good because I have signs that say that it should move higher. But at the same time, it needs to hold the gains. Well, that was when it was down 330 this morning, and now it's up 550. That's almost a thousand point move. And that's a really good sign. It says, yes, buying is coming into Bitcoin. Um, monthly chart is still really positive. Weekly chart is making lower lows and lower highs. So it's a work in progress. Let's see where it closes. But I'm, I'm impressed with the way it's come back. GBTC is the one we were actually looking at. GBTC, here we go. Um, yeah, look at look at the distance that the nine period moving has to move. Nine period has to move to go green above the fourteen period moving average. There are signs that say a very nice bounce, but so far I have to treat it as a bounce. So we're watching it. Most importantly, GBTC at fifty six seventy three at forty four pre market needs to hold the fifty four uh, under any conditions. Mustn't break fifty four. If it holds, it's a good sign. Another question, did I get a question in the uh, uh, Tiger YouTube? I think it wasn't. Um, okay, so we've got a bunch of U.S. retail. There it is. U.S. retail sales, um, June actual 0.00% versus 0.01. Previous estimate was 0.03, so it's a little better than expected. U.S. core retail sales, June actual 0.4 versus... Point minus point 0.1 previous, so that's an estimate was point 0.1. Okay, good. So uh, that's a good sign. Okay, now a couple of things I wanted to do because it's pre-market and you never know what's going to happen with the uh, as we start trading. I thought it was important. I had a question about Amazon and um, is it now? The question was: Are those Mag Sevens starting to? have a digestive phase, and does that allow those areas that you've been um, highlighting as maybe taking up the slack? Is that the case? Well, I needed to see that there were three to five sessions of downside move in Amazon, Apple. Amazon's doing it. Apple's not. Apple's still making new highs, all-time highs, uh, even as we speak, 234.96. 
very nice action. So it's kind of mixed. Netflix, Netflix is making uh, low lows and lower highs. I uh, believe that's a G top right here. So it's in a sell signal. Now I'm going to call this a C. I have no choice. A C in the weekly chart, but uh, it's done really well. Seven hundred point nine five back. It slumps to 162.71 in May 2022. And here it is back in the 600s after almost touching 700. That's good. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition Zone. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Hi folks, I just need to talk about the VIX index as Bowser well Chapman's the early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour and check out my opening call and I believe we will be announcing a webinar coming up next week uh, for subscribers and it's 13.13 .13 plus 2 in the volatility index. Um, you know, it's just kind of stuck in the low range. Uh, it broke down from the support level. All I can say is what to look for if you're expecting some kind of a sell uh, selling pressure to to uh, evolve over the next few days. Oh, I don't see it really. I see a, I do see a, a bit of a breather. Could even be today, but I think we we seen a lot of buying because we've seen rotation, and that gives buyers an opportunity to go into areas that have been weak. I didn't realize that. Uh, I just should just say if the VIX index goes above 14.50 and holds in a closing basis, you will see some kind of a pullback in the market. Um, I, I didn't realize Bank of America, because we're in it and being done well, I don't usually fuss when there's earnings reports 
um, because we've got room if there's a pullback. But in fact, it, it pushed, it so far is pushing higher to a new a recovery high. All time high was 50.11, we went down to 24.96, and it's trading right now at 42.49. So there's a bit of room, but you can see it's in this inside track repellent zone. So how it breaks into the 44s, if it's ever going to do that, that's going to be important. So let me just say, I'm anticipating that there could be some digestive phase. You can see that in the Microsofts, in the semiconductors. It's just not everything is what was working. It's just taking a breather. It's allowing money to flow into other areas. And the IWM, which we've been favoring for a long time now, talking about it, and, now we, and then we went in it, and now it's had a very big move. I broke out above that resistance level, trading at 219. That makes the whole two... 15 to 212 area on a, on a, I can't say intermediate term basis because it's really short term. That's that's the support that I'm looking at right now. To get that back down to 12, 212, seven points lower, you'd have to have some really bad news. So just a digestive sage, sage says probably the 215, you're at 219, 216 and a half, maybe 217 to 215. It's good support that was possible our support in the IWM Russell 2000. So I'm going to hand you over to uh, Tommy O'Brien and uh, say that this is uh, check out my open call. I'll be back with uh, Tom this afternoon. And uh, yeah, great day. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year.